what do you think? It's a cool one today, but I'm back out. I'm out to test some new equipment. I've got a new tent, a Kuyu Storm Star it's called. Is this the end of the Hillyburg? That's what I need to work out. Is this video gonna show you that this tent is better than the Hillyburg Alak 2? Now I've owned the Alak 2, so it's gonna be an interesting test. I'm up to a new spot, so we're just heading up here. Just parked just on Scotland side there, Scottish border. And it's only a short walk up, I think. About a mile, a mile and a half. But gonna get up there, get pitched. We're expecting some very, very cool weather tonight. Wind chill, minus 17, minus 18. So it's gonna be a real, real good test for this tent. Got all the cool weather gear. So I'm hoping I don't freeze to death. It looks like they've done quite a bit of restoration work along here. Um, some, some nice, wooded paths along there, over the bogs. Now, because it's relatively cool, or it is freezing, a lot of this wet ground is now frozen solid. I don't know what that means for getting pegs in, but certainly for the walk up, it's a little bit easier. I've been watching a YouTube channel called Northern Wayfarer. I stumbled across the channel and they went up here. I've always wondered as driving past, how many times I've been passing, I wonder what it's like up there. Uh, and it was perfectly depicted on that YouTube channel. Dropped them a message and they told me there was plenty of room for a tent up there. So we're gonna find out tonight. Just making sure I'm on the right path. I think I am. Just to the top of here now, that's going to be our pitching spot, but a, an immense view down in the valley there. You've got Lumsden Law, and then pushing on into the Cheviots there, so you can actually see the Cheviot itself, a little bit of hedge up. Whether it's picking that up on camera, I'm not too sure. Hounham Law, there's, there's quite a few there. Let's get on the way up. Just up this hill now. Oh, looks a bit steep. There we go. This is caught a pike. This isn't actually the summit, this is caught a fell, which is just off to the left there. But by God, this are some good views up here. Absolutely stunning. I can't believe I've actually never been up here. It's pretty stunning, to be honest. Amazing. The wind's coming from a northwesterly way. Uh, it is due to change to more westerly, which probably means, regardless of where I pitch a tent, it's going to get it because the west is on my left hand side here. Um, I thought I might have got a bit of protection from caught a fell, but you don't really. And even if I was to pitch, say, down right in front of us here to use this big stone ken, it wouldn't make any difference. You may as well pitch for the views. And let's not forget, we're giving this Kuyu Stormstar a test, a run for its money. You know, I'm putting it up there with the likes of the Hillyberg Alak and Solo. So the only way to do that is put it in some exposed areas and, and give it a real go. Get these poles out first, eh? Uh. 
So that's three poles, and it's set up in quite a unique, unique way. Uh, one of the poles has black on, because that's the crossing pole. I've set this up a few times, but I've never used it in the in the uh, elements yet. They come with their uh, DAC featherlight poles, nine mil. Not sure if you can get any other thickness, you know, like a 10 mil or whatever. Not sure you need to, but it would only increase the weight. The whole package is around about 2.5 kilograms. So you're talking the same as the Hilliburg Sulu. It doesn't have a ground sheet. So for this one, I'm gonna put that away. Get a couple of pegs and peg it in. Peg the four sides in first and then we will go from there. Now normally I'd be advocating tying this to, to your back. Uh, to your back, I can't speak because it's so called to your pack. Um, but I'm being lazy. We'll probably end up crossing this, you know. Let's hope not, eh? Yeah, so there's some coloured tabs on these, which make it a little bit easier to know where they're going. So the blue there, and then the corresponding blue goes in that one. Not exactly the stealthiest tent in the world, but great for photos. Right, that's in. I think I can already tell and I'll need to adjust where this is. Just by the direction of the wind. These are pretty difficult to get the get on once you've uh, when you haven't clipped everything in. Already you can see how taut it is. We haven't even got everything lined up. Take this up a bit. Get the door peg back. Oh, Christ, it's good to be out that wind, like. Food bag. Electricals. Candle. UCO. A little bit of a mat just to give some extra protection which I'll put in no special oh, thin rest checker chair for the long nights and then everything else is contained within a, a dry sack but I'll put these in a couple of sweeties obviously right Yeah, because of how big the inner is, this is made for two people. Uh, you can kind of get all your gear in as well, which I'm pretty happy about. Down jacket, that's in the bottom for now. Sleeping bag, again, chuck that over there. There's my mat, which I want to get up quickly. Right, let's get the mat up. Right, well that's everything set up now. As you can see, the sun is starting to go down. Probably got about half an hour light left. But let's give you a little look inside. So this is the setup. That is... The Criterion 450 with the Thermarest. I've got all my sleep clothing there. Down booties, slipper things, 
uh, down pants, insulating layers at the top here. I've got a down another down jacket. What's great is these little pockets. You can get all sorts of them. It doesn't make the tent sag, which is massively important for me. But I'll be looking forward to getting snug in there. What do you think? It's absolutely standing up solid at the moment. No issues whatsoever. I really like it, I love the colour. I've got a bit of a question, so anyone that's got got one, I don't know how tight this should be. There is a slight curve curvature on this bit, which I don't think there is, which I'll have to figure out, but standing strong, no issues. I'll figure out what it is. I'm sure that's something I'm doing, as opposed to the tent being an issue. But yeah, solid that, absolutely solid, really impressed. Looks great, loads of space. And what about the view? Now if I compare this to the Hilleberg Alak 2 that I had, there's no way to be standing this sturdy. Even in this wind it does sway a little bit. And it's roughly just over three kilograms, three point something, three point four I think. Whereas this is coming in about three, uh, sorry, 2.4, 2.5. Yeah. Love it. Me and Jess will be able to get into there as well. So no issues with that. Right, temperature's really starting to drop now. I'm going to get the thermometer out, stick it out and get, get a record of where we're at. And also get the anemometer out and see what the wind speeds are. Oh, bloody hell. Just taking in the last of the sunset now. Just been using the sky watch to try and find out what the wind temperature is. Uh, sorry, the wind speed is. My thermometer's actually broken, it's run out of battery, would you believe? What we're looking at here? 20. I'd say it was blowing a little bit heavier before, but it was forecast to calm down tonight. Yeah, 20, so. Not a massive, massive test of the ten, but putting it up was a little bit, a little bit trepidatious. Well, here we are. Let's make sure these guidelines are tight. Oh well, now that sun is nearly down. It is brass. I can't tell you how cool it is because me thermometer's knackered, but... What do you think about the jacket? Through dark, I've been testing it and I tell you what, I absolutely love it. I think it's phenomenal. Form, function, I think it looks mint and it actually works really, really well. I can't get enough of this jacket. I think it's absolutely lush. Keeping us warm, as I say, looks great but it also does what it's meant to do. Keep you warm. Stop the wind hitting you. Mint. Oh God, I'm absolutely uh, freezing now. I've probably said that about 20 times during this. I need to get changed out of these into my warm gear. Bit of ice forming on the inside of the tent here. And I need to get a brew on just to get my hands and get my body warmed up a little bit. Um, the cold is absolutely sapping the batteries on the camera so yeah, I am going to have to film sparingly I tried charging but I think the uh, the big power bank that I've got is, is cooled so I'm going to have to warm it up it's in the uh, Valium Peak bag but I think it needs to go in one of my pockets just to try and uh, help us out a bit there so I'm going to get a brew on Well this is the setup I've got for my cook kit, so it comes in a, a little pouch but it's just a seat, a summit cup, a little foldy thing, brilliant. Then here just a titanium cup, 
I think it's like 750, 550, something like that. Inside everything fits in there. So here's the X boil or mess all that speeds that stove. Little wipe burner and a lighter. Bit of ice forming in there, I don't know if you can see that. Oh, I think that's ready now. Yep, as you can see, tent's holding up absolutely fine. No issues here, all the guy lines are absolutely fine. Just a little bit of a little bit of crystallisation, that's all right. Crystallisation, nice little shimmer. Uh, I'm going to keep these vents open, the wind's coming from behind, so we should be fine. Lovely jubbly. Right, let's get nice and cosy inside. Right, that's food all tucked away, and a nice salted brownie, a wayfarer, and uh, the worst hot pot beef. Thing you've ever had in your life. Um, I've just been checking on the Met Office again, still about minus 10, and the winds are around about 25 mile an hour now. Tense, absolutely fine, no bother, apart from the crystallisation that we're getting. But that's part and parcel of being out in the cold. Um, I'm going to get uh, tucked in and I'm going to stick a movie on and uh, go to sleep. So I'll see you in the morning. Oh, it's about um, half one at night and I'm just absolutely freezing. I kind of get warm. I just kind of get warm. Part of my sleeping bag is wet as well, which hasn't helped. Um, I've put... Excuse me, I've put some other layers on down inside the sleeping bag, but it just... It's just not working. I think I'm going to pack up and get down at the car. I'm only about 20, 25 minutes away from the car, so it's not a massive hike. But I just kind of get, I kind of get warm. I don't know what it is. Absolutely freezing, bitter. Oh. 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 Could I stay and see it out? Yeah, but I just it's just so uncomfortable that uh, it's not worth it really. You know, I come camping to enjoy it, not to be absolutely brass and freezing. And you know, if I can get down safely without any real issue, then you know, what's the problem? Right, I'll bring his back of the car.
Right, that's me back at the car after a brisk walk down in the cold. I've got the heat and blast now in the car, but uh, one of those things, it's four-ish now. So it's managed to get some sleep, but I was just so cold and I wasn't going back to sleep. I thought best off just to pack down and come down. I would have been heading down early anyway. But in comparison, that Kuyu Storm Star was pretty good. I like it. Um, it's very comparable to that I like too. Maybe a smidgen better, being a bit lighter for me. Makes more sense, but yeah. Anyway, I'll catch you on the next one.